The Constitution says nothing about a presidential role in the removal of officers of the United States, except as a potential removee. Article 2 states that civil officers of the United States shall be removed for treason, bribery, and other high crimes and misdemeanors. Article 1 provides that the House is to impeach officers who are then to be tried by the Senate and to be removed if convicted by a two-thirds vote. Article 2 directs the President to nominate officers and gives the President the power to make recess appointments. So the Constitution says nothing about a presidential power to remove officers. The President's power to remove officers has to be implied. Article 2, Clause 3, which directs the President to take care that the laws are faithfully executed, is generally believed to entail a power to remove any officer who the President believes to be performing unsatisfactorily. Otherwise, it is said, the President would fail to discharge his or her duty to take care. This argument is fallacious. It presumes what it pretends to prove. If I am under a duty of care, only if I already possess the powers that are necessary to perform it. The President already has plenty of power and plenty to do, commanding the armed forces, negotiating treaties, reporting to Congress. Nevertheless, as Justice Holmes observed, the life of the law is experience, not logic. And experience tells us that the more perfect union the framers sought would be impossible unless someone had the power to dismiss federal officers for inefficiency falling short of a high crime or misdemeanor. The records of the framers' deliberations make it clear that they did not intend an officer to be impeachable merely for inefficiency or negligence. But of course, inefficient and negligent officers have to be dealt with. If not by impeachment, how? Personnel issues are a chief executive's job, and so it is generally agreed that a presidential power to remove inefficient officers is implicit in the constitutional design. But is a plenary power of the kind the unitary executive theorists defend implicit in the constitutional document? If removal is the flip side of appointment, mustn't the Senate agree that an officer ought to be removed? Chief Justice Taft, writing for the court in Myers, rejected the idea that removal and appointment are symmetrical in this way. The president, according to Myers, cannot be fettered when it comes to removal. We did not come to an agreement on that in our discussion last time. At first, I was convinced that we could have Myers for officers and Humphrey's executor for employees. But then it seemed that certain agencies ought to be independent if our government is to function. Agencies like the Federal Reserve Board and maybe the FCC. Clearly, some officers ought to have to please the president to keep their jobs if the president is to be able to take care that the laws are faithfully executed, like the Attorney General and the Secretaries of State, and certainly the Secretary of Defense. But the independence of others, like the Fed and the FCC, seem to be required if Congress is to be able to do what it thinks necessary and proper to promote justice, liberty, and the general welfare. Even so, Humphrey's executor's fate hangs by a thread. We do have some takeaway. Officers are appointed as per the Appointments Clause. The Senate must consent to the President's nominees, but as to inferior officers, Congress may by legislation empower the President, the courts, or the department heads to appoint without needing the Senate to be involved. Inferior officers are roughly officers who are subordinate to other officers closer to the president in a chain of command. The president may also fill vacancies during recesses which are good through the next session of Congress. The president is presumed to have a plenary power to dismiss officers at will. The presumption is that the president may dismiss officers at his pleasure. Congress may limit the president's presumptively plenary power of removal, but may not involve itself, except by impeaching. The Senate can have no role in removing an officer unless it goes through the cumbersome process of impeachment, and then it must be initiated in the House. 
But Congress may require the president to have specific grounds for removing an officer. There are certain officers that the president must be able to dismiss summarily, but there are officers whose protected tenure in office does not unduly interfere with the president's Article II duty to take care of the laws are faithfully executed. In his Morrison dissent, Justice Scalia complained that the line between the two categories was ungoverned by any rule. The court did lay down one rule in Free Enterprise Fund versus PCAOB. Congress may put a double layer of for-cause protection between the president and an employee, but not between the president and an officer. Employees, unlike officers, do not exercise significant authority of the United States. In our next installment, we turn to the topic of executive control of agency action, specifically the power to set policy.